All right, listen, Game Freak has finally done it to us. We now have access to a normal and ghost type in the form of a Silian Zorark. So you already know, I threw this bad boy on a team and we're gonna see what we can make happen. Hey, if you're new here, go ahead and hit that subscribe button. It would really help me out. I'm on my way to 300K this year. And let's go ahead and jump into the match. So the team that I'm working with today kind of revolves and has a little bit of synergy around the electric terrain. So I had to toss on the stickliest and prickliest boy around, the absolute legend Pincurchin. So I get up that electric surge, spill my lemonade all over the battlefield, and I do have the terrain extender. So that's going to stick around for a little while. Unfortunately, they end up leading off with the iron valiant. And now I give that thing its quark drive, which is not ideal. And I really don't have much on this team that wants to deal with this thing. So... My plan from the start is to try to just hit this thing with a thunderbolt with the boost from the electric terrain. It should do a good amount of chip. And I basically just need to get this thing down to range where I uh, potentially focus Sash Zorak or something can finish it off. Because I don't care what team you're working with. Iron Valiant is always the biggest dick and one of the strongest Pokemon in the game. And just no matter what is going to have an impact. So here I'm expecting something like a close combat potential drain punch. So I decide to switch into <laughs> Krusty the freaking clown coming in here with his crazy ass... Cheeto finger fire on my hair, and uh, he does go for the close combat, so that's pretty nice. I, in fact, am a gator that you cannot touch because I am ghost, and now I decide to go for the Will-O-Wisp. I'm thinking, hopefully they switch out and try to save the Iron Valiant for later. It does have hella speed, and it does have an attack left in him with that Life Orb, so I go for the Will-O-Wisp. Even if they stay in, it's totally fine. I just get the Wisp on this thing, and now it just goes down uh, to the burn damage. So, doesn't end up switching out here, and I do have to take the... Uh, the knockoff onto the Skeledurge, which does kind of suck. But I'm mostly just fine seeing this thing go down. If there was one Pokemon on their team I'm afraid of, it's definitely the Valiant. So that thing goes down, we're up 6-5, to five, and now they get a free switch into whatever they want. So they decide to go into Ndidi. Now this is particularly annoying that they have the Ndidi, because it's just going to basically trade out my Lemonade for his Grape Juice. There may have never been a stickier battlefield. But, uh, so the Psychic Surge takes over. Now, I did save the Pincurchin in the back to be able to switch that in later. This team does have a couple tricks up its sleeve and takes advantage of the Electric Terrain. But I don't have any switches into a Psychic here. So I decide to let Skeledurge go down. Uh, kind of unfortunate wasting it. I was able to take care of at least the Iron Valiant. But, yeah, Skeledurge could have been important in this match. I would have liked to get some little Throat Spray action going. But now, the door is open for our weird tentacle friend. And that... Ladies and gentlemen, is the Zorak. So, the way the illusion ability works is I'm able to switch this thing in and it takes the form of whatever Pokemon is in the back of my team. So, that is gonna be the Iron Treads. Now, I'm thinking I can go for the Terra Dark, Nasty Plot for free, expecting him to go for the Psychic, and then pretty much profit. Listen, Hisuian Zorark may be one of the coolest Pokemon we have access to just because of the fact that this typing is incredibly unique. It, it can't take fighting damage, it can't take ghost damage, it's only weak to dark. And uh, it, this thing works as a spin blocker, it has super great coverage, and it even got a nice little buff uh, from the regular form of Zorark. So I go for the Nasty Plot there, my dude's probably thinking, hello, did this digital ass Don fan just go for a Nasty Plot? So he goes for the Psychic, I obviously don't take anything from that because I am now dark, and uh, I just Houdini right up on his ass because I am in fact a Zorark and not, <laughs> not the Don fan. So... Now with my clean little plus two from the Nasty Plot and my Hyper Voice Stab, there's not much that can take an attack from this thing. They decide to go into the Meow Scarada, I yell at that thing, and it just goes away. So that is pretty damn solid. Keep in mind, I do actually also have the Focus Sash, so I still have a hit left in me no matter what happens here. Uh, they decide to go into the Gallade here. Now this thing, if it's Choice Scarf, should be able to outspeed and knock me to my Sash regardless. I just go for the Shadow Ball here. It does go for the Sacred Sword does outspeed me, but that knocks me down to one, and the illusion is over. You can now see the beautiful Hisui and Zorark. It's actually unfortunate that this was a Choice Scarf Gallade, because uh, Zorark still had some had some heat left in him if I was able to outspeed there. This thing has 110 base speed, so it's actually got a pretty decent speed tier. But anyway, down goes the Gallade, and Zorark is out here poking holes in the team like this thing is supposed to do. Illusion, it can be difficult to pull off, but when it does work, it's incredibly satisfying, especially pair that with a Terra. So, in comes a set of car keys that are floating about a quarter mile into the air. I don't know what, why this thing is so high up there, uh, but it decides to go for the Rain Dance. Now, I have the coverage on the Steel type and I decide to go for the Flamethrower, but the Fire move in the Rain is not quite going to do it here. So, now it's actually crazy that they set up the Rain there, because if you notice from the team preview, they actually do have a Floatzel on their team, which in the Rain is actually a huge problem to my team. So this battle is far from over. They have a sweeper in the back that could technically ruin my entire team. So, I go for the Shadow Ball here as he sets up a layer of spikes with that Prankster ability just to do something before it goes down and we grab our third kill with the Zorark here, but it's looking like it's kind of come to an end because now we got to deal with the Water Wings. This is a very scary Pokemon in that it has 
uh, doubled speed in the rain. It has access to a move called Wave Crash. Pair that with a Life Orb. Pretty much nothing lives. It also has Aqua Jet for priority. So, uh, to make matters worse, they're actually even going to go for the Terra. Give this thing Water Type just to boost that Water Stab. And there is truly not much on the face of this Earth that wants to deal with a Floatzel who has a Water Hat on. So, he goes for the Aqua Jet here. And down goes the Zorark. So, it's at least good that I was able to take care of the Klefki. Now, the thing was, more than likely carrying the... Uh, the Damp Rock to ensure that the rain sticks around for eight turns. So I have eight turns of this Floatzel being a real, real Nick asshole. So uh, I get to switch into whatever I want here, and I decide probably Stickler is kind of my best bet. What I can do is try to get up the Electric Terrain, and if I can do that, I can then bring in Halucha, who is carrying the Electric Seed item. Upon switching in, gonna pop that seed and give me my Unburden ability. Now this works particularly well because Halucha has a base speed of 118 where if my speed is doubled, I should be faster than Floatzel in the rain because Floatzel is base 115 speed. So, uh, I think that this thing likely just wants to stay in and just grab the kill on the Pink Urgents to ensure that I can't get any more uh, to terrain up, but he instead switches into old Croissant Head. Got fucking Croissants for ears and then just gets up the Psychic Surge and I lose the terrain battle there because I, in fact, go for the memento. Uh, basically just thinking that Pink Urchin was going to be sacked there and then I could switch into Halucha. But they make the really good play and then they set up the uh, psychic terrain. So that is very bad. And now I kind of don't have a direct answer uh, to that Floatzel unless the rain goes away before then. But I have now moved into plan B. And phase one of that plan B is putting a foot right in this thing's face. So I decide to go into the Halucha here I can hit this thing with a high jump kick, which should be able to knock it out unless it's like weirdly defensive. Um, so I go for the high jump kick, luckily don't miss and kill myself, and I do knock that thing out. So, the main phase of plan B is that I know that the Floatzel comes in and has all the rain time that it needs. But what I can do is basically rely on my iron leads. I actually also have the new Verizion form that we were given access to. And with three turns of rain, it's looking like I'm not going to be able to stall out the rain here. So I stay in. This thing is forced to go for the wave crash here. Um, it's going to get enough damage to knock out Halucha, but it also puts this thing into range where he's going to be reluctant to go for the wave crash against the iron leaves because it's going to take another set of that recoil damage from full HP on my Verizion and then plus the life warp. So thinking about damage calcs, his next best option is going to click Ice Spinner, which has a really good chance to kill my Iron Leaves, and I forget the fact that there's also spikes on the field. So I thought I was gonna come in, switch in on full HP. Unfortunately, I take that little sliver of spikes damage, which now puts this into like a 60% chance for this thing to kill me with an Ice Spinner. So I go for the Leaf Blade here. If he wave crashes, he does grab a kill. However, he also takes the recoil and then likely won't have enough to kill the Dawn Fan. So he's forced to go for the Ice Spinner here. And luckily, Rusty Spoon, aka Young Salad Fingers, lives it with 8 HP, which is absolutely insane. And I can now slice this thing and dice him with a nice little leaf blade. So that, ladies and gentlemen, is going to be the end of the match. And I'll tell you what, I've never been so afraid of a Floatzel in my damn life. But we pop his little air sacks, and that <laughs> is going to finish it off. So, at least I was able to get the Iron Leaves to do something as well. But super fun match, I had a lot of fun with this team. I think there's a lot of potential with, the, with a lot of these new mons we're given access to. But... Let me know what you guys think. As always, leave a comment, leave a like on the video, and I appreciate each and every one of you. Peace out.